welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the highly anticipated Latte Panda Alpha, which has been supplied to review by my friends at DF Robot. Now, this is a very powerful single board computer with an Intel processor, which is able to run both Windows and Linux. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have the Latte Panda Alpha, or to be more specific, the Latte Panda Alpha 864, because there were two versions of the Latte Panda Alpha, and there's also another new board with the same form factor called the Latte Panda Delta. So what I'm going to do is to show you the Latte Panda Alpha 864 in some depth, go through all of its specs, and then we'll have another segment of the video where I'll tell you the differences between this and the other two new boards, and we'll look at the prices and things like that. So let's start up by opening this thing up, and I think it just slides off the outer case. You always get very nice boxes from a DF Robot or matte laminates and foil inlays and things like that. But to open that up, and in here, I think it opens up like a chocolate box. It does. There we oh, there we are. Look, the Latte Panda Alpha. Wow, that looks like a really cool single board computer. I think I would guess these things lift. Do you think so? Let's take that out like like that, all that comes out like that, and there's the border itself, we'll obviously look at that in a second. And then in here, oh, we've got a user manual, they'll always get a user manual with a single board computer, and then this, I imagine, is that's a power supply, looks like a power supply, good to get a single board computer with a power supply, isn't it? Can I get it out? There we are, there's a power supply and various leads, things like that. But let's go back to the, uh, the board itself, obviously to get it out of its little uh, container, here we are, and uh, there we are. Here is the uh, Latte Panda Alpha, the new single board computer we've all been waiting to see. So let's run you through its specs. And as you can see straight away, it's got a cooler fitted on the top of the board, a temperature controlled cooler. This is on top of the uh, CPU, which is a dual core seventh generation Intel mobile processor and M37Y30, which is clocked at up to 2.6 gigahertz. And we also here have Intel HD Graphics 615, and as you can see, it's got eight gigabytes of RAM on this board, eight gigabytes of LPDDR3 1866 dual channel RAM. Also on this board, we've got 64 gigabytes of eMMC flash storage. This is eMMC version 5.0, which is supposed to be very fast. And this is the storage from which the Latte Panda Alpha 864 will boot. We move to the first short edge of the board. You can see we've got three USB 3 ports, Type-A USB 3 ports, and also rather a nice view of the side of the cooler. Moving to the first long edge, at one end we have got a real-time clock battery, not just a connector for a real-time clock battery, but an actual battery is on this board, and next to it there is a reset switch. And then at the other end of this edge, you see we've got the connector for the cooling fan. And next to the cooling fan, we've also got the power switch. And then in the middle of this edge, we've got the first of two 50-pin GPIO connectors on the Latte Panda Alpha. And this one, and you can see it's a beautifully labeled. I do like to have all the labels on the connector. It makes life so much easier when putting things together. But this particular GPIO connector is actually linked in to the board's onboard coprocessor, which is an Arduino Leonardo coprocessor, an 18 mega 32 U4. So if you want to use this to control maker projects and robots and that type of thing, it's great to have that Arduino controller integrated onto the board. Moving to the second short edge, we first find a full-size HDMI connector supporting 4K output, and then next to that, the gigabit ethernet connector. And I really like this gigabit ethernet connector. As you can probably see, it's actually mounted through the board to keep things as narrow as possible. This board is only, by my measurement, about 13 millimeters high. So that's, uh, I think, really interesting. I haven't seen a connector quite like that before. Next to that, we've got the standard uh, 3.5 millimeter audio connector, including the microphone input. And next to that, you'll see we've got a USB-C connector. And this can be used to power the board. We will be using it to power the board with the power adapter we have supplied. But this also supports a USB 3 connection or a DisplayPort connection offering a 4K at up to 60p. So you've got different options on this board. And if you're wondering what happens if you don't use that for power, well, all we have to do is to move around the edge of the board again, and you'll see that round the corner, we have a dedicated 12 volt power connector. 
Also on this lung edge, we've got a, a connector for some system control pins down here. I don't know exactly what those are, but it's always nice to have something which is a mystery. But what is not a mystery is in the middle, we have our 50 pin GPIO connector, our second 50 pin GPIO connector. And this, as you can see again, is all labeled up. And this gives us lots of interesting options. It's got a I2C, I2S, it's got USB connectors, RS-232 connectors, UART, extendable power buttons on this. Again, lots of connectivity. This board will be connected up and used in so many different ways. If we cut back to the top shot, I'll just mention the size of the board because the Latte Panda Alpha is a bit bigger than many single board computers. It's 115 millimeters by 78 millimeters. And just to show you that in practical terms, there is the original Latte Panda. So you can see it's, a, it's bigger than that board. And I've also shown you relative to a, a Raspberry Pi, such a common form factor these days. You see the board is a significantly larger than a Raspberry Pi. But that, of course, is because it's got so much to pack onto the board. Now, talking of things to pack onto the board, if this was one of my typical single board computer review videos, I'd have pretty much finished by now. I've shown you the top, gone around the edges. But on the Latte Panda Alpha, this is not the case because if we turn the board over, there's some really exciting things underneath. Now, for a start underneath, we have got a micro SD card slot. Okay, that's not one of the most exciting things, but it's useful to have it. And we've also got an onboarder wireless module giving us a Wi-Fi 802.11ac and a Bluetooth 4.2. We've also got an EDP display connector and a touch power connector for it as well. And that allows it to support to 4K at 60p onto a connected display. But finally, and the really exciting thing here is we've got two, count them, two M.2 connectors on the base of a Latte Panda Alpha. And the first one is a M keyed, and this is a PCIe times four slot, and this can take an NVMe SSD or a SATA 3 SSD. So we can put an SSD onto the Latte Panda Alpha. We'll be using this slot a bit later in the video. The other slot is a E keyed, and this offers a PCIe times two, USB 2, UART PCM. So still a useful slot, although not quite as exciting as the slot here, which will take an NVMe SSD. So there we are, let's just flick it back the other way so it can uh, feel happy. There is the uh, Latte Panda Alpha, a really amazing single board computer, a great deal of computing power packed into a very small space indeed. So here I am back again, and I wanted to start off showing you these which were under the wires in the box. I missed these initially. We've got some stickers there, and we've also got a couple of uh, little packets, and these packets contain some risers and also the antennas for the board's wireless functionality. But if we go back to the, uh, the board itself, or more specifically the boards, because in this table you can see the specification and the prices for the three new Latte Panda models. And as you'll see on the left here, we've got the Latte Panda Alpha 864, which we've been looking at. And this costs $358 without Windows or $399 if you want it supplied with Windows 10 Pro activated. There's then the Latte Panda Alpha 800, which is exactly the same hardware, but doesn't have the onboard flash storage. It has no EMMC flash storage. So you've got to add your own drive to that board. And as you can see, this costs $318. And then finally, we have the Latte Panda Delta 432, which has got four gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of onboard flash storage, and has a Celeron N4100 processor rather than the Core M37Y30. So a less powerful processor, less powerful graphics as well, but although not, not by very much. And as you can see, this costs $188 without the operating system or $228 with Windows 10 Pro activated. So there we are. This is the new Latte Panda range, and I think it's now high time we went and booted up the Latte Panda Alpha 864. So I've now got everything connected up. The board is all ready to go, connected into mouse, keyboard, monitor, and obviously power. So if I now flick the power switch, And you uh, will hopefully see there's a little red light, little red LED that comes on down here, and that has to settle. And when that's occurred, as on any PC, we then push the power switch, which is just up here. So we push the power switch and we hold that in. Little blue light comes on. We get some momentary activity from the fan. And here we are booting up. Nice to have those little Latte Panda Panda eyes on the screen there. 
And this should be a fairly fast boot, I would think. We're rebooting from EMMC flash storage on a fairly powerful PC. And um, here we are, arriving into Windows on the Latte Panda Alpha. And I should say this is not my first boot. I've booted, I think, three or four times already, partially to set things up for recording in terms of display configuration, and partially because Windows had to install lots of updates, as Windows always does when you first have it running on a new PC. And if I click on this PC, which I've added to the desktop, uh, you will see we've got, what, 39.2 gigabytes free space on our 64 gigabytes of onboard flash storage. If I just do properties on that, you'll see that we've currently got 18.4 gigabytes being used. I haven't installed anything on, on this machine except lots of Windows updates. And I would say that figure was 12.5 gigabytes on my very first boot. So lots of updates and other things have come in. And uh, other than this, it's a very, very responsive copy of Windows. We just look at the menu here, you'll see it's all there. Look, there's lots of things Windows has installed itself. Candy Crush and things like that have been put in, even though I didn't ask for those. Maybe if I get rid of those, I can get some space back. Anyway, there we are. This is the uh, Latte Panda Alpha running Windows very nicely indeed. I would now like to stress it out a bit, but before I do that and install software to, to do some tests, I'm first going to install an NVMe SSD. Now, here I have the Latte Panda Alpha and the WD Black NVMe SSD I reviewed on my channel not that long ago. And so I thought it'd be fun to put the two together. So that should be very easy. Just flick over the board here and we just need to take out the screw and drop in the drive. So I'll do that. And uh, there we are. We've now got a SSD, a WD Black NVMe SSD fitted on our uh, Latte Panda Alpha. So, here I am back on the Windows 10 Pro desktop, and if I click uh, my PC there, we can see we've had a successful install of the NVMe SSD. And I thought it'd be nice to check that out, see how it works on the Latte Panda Alpha. So, I've got Crystal Disk Mark here, and I'm going to uh, run that, and this will show us how the drive performs on this system. And you may remember I've already tested out this drive in a review a few videos back on an i7 system. So I'll bring in the, that data, we'll fast forward on and see how a Latte Panda Alpha compares. And uh, there we are, it's finished and we've got pretty respectable results. We can see the Latte Panda Alpha has managed to achieve what 18, 20 megabytes a second read and 1668 megabytes a second Right, so clearly it can't uh, max out the drive like the i7, but it's sort of very respectable storage performance on a single board computer. Now, you might be thinking how does this compare to the internal EMMC flash storage, so I have run the test on that, as we can see here, and there you can see we've got about 192 megabytes a second read and about 98 megabytes a second write. So, let's come back to where we were, and uh, I've got those other things running here. For example, I've got down here Open Hardware Monitor, which is showing us uh, how the machine is uh, doing in various ways. We can see we've got the processor we thought we had, which is always, always good. And you can see the core speed here, it's going along at about uh, 7, 800 megahertz at the moment, but it's, uh, we've got the min and max values there, it's been down to uh, about 500 megahertz and up to its max of uh, 2613 megahertz, which is what it's supposed to get to. You'll see the board is running just under 60 degrees here. It's been down into the, the mid 50s since I launched the Open Hardware Monitor. This machine's been running for, for many hours now, and it's been up to uh, 75. So it does get quite warm, and you do get that impression with the Latte Panda Alpha that it is a, a fairly hot running machine. I've had no problems with that, uh, and the fan comes on and off as, as it needs to. And I would say the fan is very, very quiet indeed. The only real way to know the fan is running is if you could actually have a look at it to see if you could see the, the blades going round or not. So that, that's good. I've also here got running a GIMP because I've used GIMP to test out many single board computers in the past, so it just seemed a nice idea to do it on this one as well. I've loaded in my standard test image, this 3600, 2400 image, to which I often apply a filtered entire edge detect, there it is, and uh, neon. So I will run this. It'll be very fast indeed, we would expect it. It'll beat any single board computer I've looked at previously. It should do, given the price of the Latte Panda Alpha. So I'll get rid of that, and I'll say, no, I don't want to save that at all. And I thought, how can I really stress out this board? And so what I thought I'd do is I'd try some video editing. And I've actually installed DaVinci Resolve 12. So I'll run that up. And this is a pretty beefy video editor. This is a really big test of resources. 
I haven't used the latest version of DaVinci Resolve because I thought that really might be a little bit too much for this board, but DaVinci Resolve 12 is still a, a very large package to try out. So we'll let this run up. And uh, here we are in the project manager. We've got a little test edit there. We'll load that in. I should say that DaVinci Resolve and its media are all installed on the NVMe SSD. And if we go to the edit screen here, um, here we are editing video on the Latte Panda Alpha in the DaVinci Resolve. And it's not a perfect, but it works pretty well. This is a perfectly a usable video SD experience with the trains going along there, which is, which is really nice. So uh, there we are. That for me is a really interesting test. I've never before managed to run a really powerful video editor on a single board computer. And I think this really shows us the power, the capability of the Latte Panda Alpha. The Latte Panda Alpha is a beautiful computer which succeeds very well in packing a great deal of computing power and connectivity into a very small space. And you can very much tell it's a second generation product. You can see how DF Robot have taken what they did with the first Latte Panda, which is still a great board, and they've refined it just to deliver something which is even better. Now, admittedly, the Latte Panda Alpha is expensive. It's not a direct competitor to a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi. However, if you want to be able to run Windows or a mainstream Linux distribution on a very small board, or you're looking for a brain for your latest robot or an AI project, then the Latte Panda Alpha or the Latte Panda Delta are very strong contenders indeed. But now that's it for another video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.